Huntsville, Texas. More prisoners have been executed in this penitentiary than any other jail in the United States. From murderers to petty criminals, thousands more languish behind bars for decades. They're gonna let you out the back gate over here. You go across the street and walk down to the left. These men are about to be released. If your family is here to pick you up, they'll be right across the street. But the chances are they'll be back. I've been incarcerated all my life, and I've never had no kids, so I, I don't have no family. I've got cousins somewhere in Louisiana, but I really don't know. This is my family. This is all I know. Reoffending is one of the greatest challenges facing justice systems worldwide. But could it be that prisons themselves are at the heart of this global problem? Families of the inmates have an anxious wait across the road from the penitentiary. But for the prisoners, their first taste of freedom can be overwhelming. They're tired. They probably haven't had a good night's sleep in two or three nights. They haven't eaten right. They're off their medication. A former prisoner himself, Bill Kleiber, knows the difficulties these men will face over the next 24 hours. The most difficult thing that they're going to have to overcome is moving from being a child to an adult. See, inside there, they treat us like children. They've been making about five decisions a day. Now they're making five decisions a minute. They have little to help them start a new life. They're given $50 on release, a shirt, trousers, and a pair of shoes. Those lucky enough to have the support of families head for home. The others have to fend for themselves. Ollie Matthews has been in and out of prison since he was 16. Well, I went and got me a nice hot barbecue sandwich and a fresh pack of Marlboro cigarettes. It cost almost $5. The last time I was here it was $2.50, now they're $5. These released prisoners are all on parole. All you gotta do is wait till they yell Houston or down. Those with no fixed address or family are sent to halfway houses all over Texas. I got a bus ticket. They gave me a, a voucher to Houston today. I don't know where I'm going to go after that, but I'm heading to Houston today, so. Ollie struggled with a heroin addiction since he was 13. But if he falls back into old habits or breaches his parole, he'll be straight back in the penitentiary. All right, guys. The odds are stacked against these men. Like in many countries, more than half of ex-prisoners are back behind bars before long. But there's one country that's taking a very different approach. This is Norway's Bastoy prison. Nestled in the Oslo Fjord, a short boat ride from the nearest town. This island is home to 115 inmates, all convicted of serious crimes, from drug trafficking to murder. But this is no Alcatraz. Our main task is to produce a good neighbor. All the guys staying here for a shorter or longer time have that in common that they're going to be released at some point to a normal society out there and to be someone's neighbor. Down that road, well, won't 
Bastoy is a flagship example of Norway's liberal approach to justice. All of the inmates have been transferred from locked prisons and will spend up to three years here in preparation for release, under the watchful eye of warden Tom Eberhardt and 35 other prison officers. Normal prisons, you're uh, actually taken care of all the time, more or less. You're told when to eat, you're told what to do. We are completely dependent upon the inmates uh, on, on this place to actually make this small society go around. If you're a person that is actually is going to survive in a normal society, you'll have to learn how to take responsibility. From the ferry service to the farm, carpentry to butchery, the island is mostly self-sufficient and run by the prisoners. In their work, they have access to potentially lethal tools, a fact that doesn't seem to concern the employed head chef. I've been there for almost 15 years, I think. I've never been afraid, not that once. They're normal people, almost. <laughs> <laughs> One of the island's longest serving prisoners is Hans Petter Hansen. He's on an 18-year stretch, the last two of which have been spent here. It's our uh, living room, but uh, it's also our practice room. So uh, this is uh, where all the fun is. So um, we practice here for three, four, five nights a week. He leads the prison's blues band. When you're uh, in maximum security prison, you, you get your guard up. You, you close away a lot of things. Uh, you have to be very primitive in the, the way you think, like a caveman. Uh, but here, I can try to be more normal again. Norway's liberal attitude to justice has been mocked as an oddball social experiment, but it is getting results. In the United States, reoffending rates are 77%. In Norway, it's 20%. An international benchmark helped by prisons like Bastoy, which has a reoffending rate of just 16%. It takes more than statistics to shift decades of global consensus on punishment, especially in countries where talking tough on crime wins votes. Time is running out for the merchants of crime and corruption in American society. They can go to jail, and they can stay in jail, and they can rot in jail. Three strikes, and you are out. The United States is feeling the full impact of decades of hardline policies. Although the country has only 5% of the world's population, it has 25% of the world's prison population. In a career spanning 30 years, Texan judge Bobby Francis has convicted his fair share of criminals. I prosecuted someone who received the death penalty. I've signed the death warrant on six or seven people as a judge. I'm not soft on crime. In the 90s, he was gaining a reputation for being a no-nonsense judge, but he soon realized that he wasn't getting the results he wanted. When you realize all you're doing is sending the people to prison and you're sending them over and over, when I start recognizing people the second, third, or fourth time they come through, you begin to think, wait a second, this isn't working. This is a bunch of BS. All we do is double the cost. Crime rates continue to go up. Judge Francis now runs a very different type of courtroom. It's turning back a centuries-old hard-line approach to punishment in a bid to bring down the cost of criminal justice. How's everybody doing today? Good. 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 Okay. 
This court deals with serial offenders who have already been convicted. But instead of serving another long prison stretch, they've spent up to nine months in a prison reform facility before being released into a rehabilitation program. Each week, they face the unique justice of Judge Francis. Does anybody know Alex Garcia? I spoke with him earlier. Um, he said he was going to show up for court. Okay, I mean, because he's missed some stuff. He knows he's going to jail, but if he doesn't he show up, he's going to make it worse. I get asked all the time whether or not I'm soft on crime, um, and I've given the same answer every time. Anybody that comes and sits in my courtroom and watches me interact with the folks and thinks I'm soft on crime has got to be a low-functioning idiot. If you show up and you're dirty, you better have told me before you ever went and peed in that cup. There are consequences for repeated parole breaches or failing a drug or alcohol test. And then if you don't do either of those and you don't continue to show up like Mr. Garcia, you're going to end up in prison. And so you, you got to make a decision. I go do a few years in prison. Fuck, I miss those group showers. I got to get back to prison, <laughs> man. It's just uh, <laughs> nothing better than somebody scratching your back. <laughs> If I can get them to stay sober, get a job, be responsible, maybe they don't repeat their criminal activity and they change their behavior. I've been spending a lot of time with my daughter lately. I got to go a little, go to a little graduation of hers, and I've never done that before. And it just, it, it kind of hit my heart because just seeing her get her little certificate and everything, and and looking, looking at her look for us in the in the crowd, and it's just amazing. It just, it really. I thank, I thank God for where I'm at right now, and I'm not still in my addiction. Good deal. Give him a hand. When Judge Francis started his reentry court in 2001, there were just a few in Texas. Now there are nearly 250. In that time, the state incarceration rate has fallen by 16%. Our incarceration rates have dropped. There's no question about that. Have they dropped where we want them to be? No, of course not. Are we doing enough in reentry, in prison reform, in criminal justice reform? No, but we're on the right path. 4 hours after being released from prison, Ollie Matthews has arrived in Houston, but he's already lost his money and some important documents. What's that in your pocket? Is that your bus ticket? No. No, I don't, even, I don't have a bus ticket. I don't even have them. Worldwide, there are 10 million prisoners. Like Ollie, most of them have inadequate preparation or support when they're released. He just got out of Huntsville today. He doesn't, I don't have his parole papers. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Hey, want me to go check the bus and see if, I, if it ain't on the bus? Cause I... They don't know. They, they're not going to. Ollie heads across town to the halfway house where he'll have a bed for the next few days. Got no underwear, no socks, no nothing. This is what I got. This is, this is what my, my life. For 59 years old, this is what I own in life right here in this red sack and what I got on my back. I, I don't know what I want to do. I'm free, though. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> free. <laughs> if I ain't nothing else, I'm free. The challenge for justice systems in any country is keeping offenders out of prison for good. You could check five years, five months from now, I will never be back to prison, never. Until rehabilitation is put at the heart of justice system's approach to punishment, they'll continue to fail offenders, fail victims, and fail societies. See y'all later, guys. Y'all have a good deal, all right? Nice meeting y'all. Y'all have a nice time, man.